Alexa, were you being shy? I'm certainly not shy. I love talking to people. Hi, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com. Recently, I was on a webinar with a number of uh, fellow animal advocates as well as academics who study animal issues, and I was shocked to learn that the lead person presenting thought that the speciesism in our language was more of a symptom rather than part of the underlying cause, which implies that evolving our language isn't necessarily a big part of our animal advocacy. So I thought I'd ask Alexa to see what she has to say. Hey Alexa, we haven't made a video together in ages. Where have you been? I've been busy answering your questions about how to cut your own hair, which stores have toilet paper left, and when you can meet a friend for a walk with a cup of coffee, and it won't be considered a picnic breaking lockdown rules. Okay, okay, let's get on with it. So I want to be an animal advocate. Where should I get started? When it comes to advocating for our fellow animals, my data shows the most important thing we can do which also happens to be the most accessible, is to change our language. What? Why would we need to change our language? As Rita Mae Brown said, language is the road map of a culture. It tells you where its people come from and where they are going. So if we want to change where we're going, we first need to change our language. Come on, language isn't that important. We can't change the way people think about our fellow animals just through our language. Sure we can. See how I just got you to say, our fellow animals instead of just animals. This gestures at the fact that we are all animals who experience life. Okay, fine. But that doesn't mean people are going to respect them, does it? The study of sociolinguistics has shown us that the language we use reflects how we view the world and those who we share it with. If we don't use respectful non-speciesist language, it's much less likely humans will respect our fellow animals. What does non-speciesist language have to do with it? Most of our language is speciesist as it has been influenced by the dominate speciesist culture. To challenge the culture, we must first challenge our language. Speciesist language? What are you talking about? At an individual level, speciesism is when humans think they are superior to other animals just because of their species membership. It is also systemic. Language that reinforces this lack of respect for our fellow animals is speciesist. But humans are superior. Are you trying to say that people are equal to animals? Well, first of all, people are animals and our fellow animals are people. Oh. Language like this reinforces human superiority, as it suggests they are different categories, when they are not. Mm. And yes, humans are equal to other animals at a basic moral level. The idea of animal rights isn't about pigs having the right to art classes. <laughs> It's about respecting all animals for the unique individuals who they are, which means not breeding using or killing them. In that way, we are all equal. Okay, fine. If we agree that language is important, what's an example of speciesist language that we should try to avoid? The most common example of speciesist language is referring to our fellow animals, as it. Mm. This perpetuates the myth that they are something versus someone. Okay, that makes sense. So how do we know if language is speciesist? The easiest way to check is using the flip it to test it approach. Anytime we're talking about our fellow animals, we should ask ourselves if we use this same language for humans if it sounds respectful. If we wouldn't use the language for a human, we should seriously question why we're using specific language for other animals, as it's likely to reinforce human superiority and speciesism. Okay, flip it to test it approach. Got it. Sounds like I have a lot to learn. Part of being an animal advocate is always being willing to learn and evolve. You can learn more about language by joining the Unlearning Speciesist Language Group on Facebook or the language document on veganinteractions.com. Thanks, Alexa. What should we talk about next? I don't know. Perhaps we can ask those who are watching to let us know in the comments. <laughs> After they share this video with their vegan Facebook groups, of course. All right, sounds good. Well, you heard her. What do you think I should ask Alexa about next? As always, thank you for your support. The liking, commenting, and subscribing really does help these videos get out there. And you may want to share this with a fellow animal advocate who you think would benefit from thinking more about their language, which is probably all animal advocates, isn't it? I hope you're all hanging in there through these strange times and try to remember that spring's right around the corner. See you in the next video. Hey, Alexa. 
Oh, really? You're going to crap out? I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. Hey, Alexa. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Alexa, did you have some issues with stage fright and getting set up? You didn't want to do that, did you? Sorry, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's okay, I understand. Good job, Alexa. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.